Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, I want to make a cool visualizer in Max for Live to run inside Ableton so I can have some little visual eye candy whilst I'm playing around in Ableton and I'm going to build one and I invite you to come along and follow me along or download it from my Patreon if you don't want to do that at the end. It's going to look pretty cool. I really love making Max for Live jitter visualizers in Ableton. It's very rewarding and it makes Ableton a little bit more fun. And I'm always looking for new ideas to try out. And there's already a gazillion things I've tried out on my Patreon for this type of stuff. But this is one I've never tried before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and make like a 3D object. But that 3D object is actually a waveform of the currently streaming audio that's going into the device. So I prepared this little funky drum rack thing. Uh, just so that I've got some source. And it's kind of a little bit modular. It's all kind of changing constantly. The kick drums and snare drums and the hi-hats are all opening and closing and changing shape on each new beat or whatever. So that is going to be my audio source. Let's go into Max and get started. So first of all, we are going to need a JIT.world. Let's zoom in a little bit. A JIT.world. I'm going to name it... Um, uh, 3D wave and um, I'm going to say at floating one at enable one um, I may not worry about the dimensions right now that's fine we'll just go with that oh let's maybe do an erase color at erase color 0, 0, 0, 001 which should be black okay let's put that over there let's move this here um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write audio into a buffer and then reference the contents of that buffer with a Jitter OpenGL 3D object. So let's start by writing into the buffer. Let's create a buffer and let's call the buffer. Whoa, I'm zooming out. I don't want to do that. Uh, this is tricky to do on YouTube sometimes because everything's so small. Um, Let's do, look, we need to give it a name. So I need to give, give dash, 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 3D wave. And I want the maximum contents to be 24,000 milliseconds. Why 24,000 milliseconds? Well, 24,000 milliseconds is the exact contents, or I should say the exact amount of time when you have Ableton at 20 BPM for two bars. Two bars at 20 BPM is 24 seconds. So I want that to be the maximum amount of time I want to record into in case someone who uses this wants to write a song at 20 BPM. Anyway, and I want two channels, but actually I don't think it really matters, but let's have two channels anyway. Okay, so that's the buffer we're going to record into. Now let's make a waveform at buffer name. That's about that, right? Yeah, dash, 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 3D wave. And that is just so that we can see uh, that we are indeed recording into a buffer, this buffer. Okay, and then I want to uh, create something to record with. So let's make a record with the same buffer name, dash, 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 3D wave, um, two, yeah, two channels at loop one because uh, when the contents of the buffer is filled, I want it to then go back to the beginning and start re-recording. So we can plug our audio in here and I will make a live dot this device to send a trigger one when the device loads to start recording when the device loads. Is that right? Output bang when patch. Yes, right. Okay, so that is where we are going to record already. It's an absolute mess. And I want to decide how much of the buffer I want to record into. So I'll make a live menu. I will go to the prototype and I will choose note values. And I will do now translate note values. Whoops, spelled wrong. Note values to MS at listen one i don't th i think you can actually just plug oh that says record point in milliseconds all right let's do it this way but some other um some other objects like groove will actually take this timing syntax but um, let's use milliseconds on this occasion right and then also let's use the output of this number here 
let's just check that that's right that's 500 milliseconds let's use that to set the display length of the waveform so that we can um only see what we've just recorded right let's go back to ableton fire that off see if it's working no it's not okay let's bang the live dot device yep yeah, right we're recording into the buffer we can click this buffer and see that that is recording only the first few seconds but the waveform is showing me that we are recording 500 milliseconds okay great so that's working right um very nice okay Go back to Ableton, stop that second. Right, so now we need to put that into a 3D object. So I'm going to use JIT.buffer and I'm going to use the JIT.buffer with the same name as the audio buffer, dash, 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 3D wave. And I'll say 24,002, basically exactly the same. So if I double click this now, we won't see anything. If I go back to Ableton and press play, you can see that like this buffer we are recording into this bottom one is the audio buffer this one is the jit dot buffer which is essentially the same it's just sending out a jitter matrix so we can visualize the contents of that jitter matrix by first creating a message output connecting that to the jit dot buffer and then taking a render bang from the jit.world. Let's maybe put that down there. Keep everything sort of a bit separate. So we'll have all our audio stuff like here and our jitter stuff down here. Okay. So now the jit.world is sending a 30 FPS. Let's actually say, let's specify that at FPS 30. So that's sending a bang every 30, 30 times a second, which is um, sending the message output to the jit.buffer, which is going to output the contents of this buffer, but in a jitter matrix. So let's make a jit.p window and see if that is working. Let's go back here, hit play. Right, it's working, I think, but it's only showing a small part of it. That's fine because what we need to do also is specify the output length. So let's go prepend output length, all one word, connect that to the jit.buffer and then take the output of the maximum, well, how do I explain this? The current buffer time that we are recording into, which we're specifying with this um, live.menu here, so even though that we've got a maximum recording time of 24 seconds, we're using this to say, actually, I only want to record for the first second of that buffer. And we need that number to also specify the output of the jit.buffer. So we can just simply take that number, put that there, and maybe select this again. Go back to Ableton, press play, come back here. Right, there we go. There is our um, contents of our buffer in a matrix form. It looks very nice and we can actually keep this in the presentation as well as a visual aid to check that it's working so if i stop the transport it'll disappear because eventually there's no the, the record object is constantly recording it's like a delay tape delay all right this is all very nice now what can we use to visualize the contents of that jit.buffer in 3d well i'm going to use jit.gl.graph not grid shape graph let's zoom in a little bit and all we really need to do is just take the output of the jit.buffer and connect it to the jit.graph. Hit play back in here. And there we go. There is our, <laughs> there's our kind of waveform um, in 3D. Let's turn that down a little bit. Leave it running in the background so we can see it working. But So there, there we go. Now we could um, sort of move around that, but um, I'm actually going to create a little 3D scene and make some decisions here because um, the jit.gl.graph has a attribute called, where is it, circ points. The default is five. When you start to go into quite high values like 25, you get more rounded, um, I guess, vertices, I suppose. Um, but it can start to be a bit of a drain. See, if I go to like 100, um, it's not quite smooth. If I come back down to five, we've got a much better frame rate, but less poly. But that's okay, because actually I'm just going to make a bit of a decision here. And I think this actually looks better 
um, when there's less depth on the z-axis. So let's say at scale, one for the x-axis, one for the y-axis, and 0 0.25 for the z-axis. Right, okay. Nice. Now, if I connect a jit.gl.material. Yeah, there we go. Look at our cool 3D waveform of real-time audio. It looks nice. Um, let's give it a color. Let's open the material editor, go to the matte diffuse, and let's give it the salmon. Let's make it look Ned Rush as fuck. Right, okay. Whoa, what have I just done? Okay, let's close that editor. Um, let's maybe hard code that into the material. Yeah, what does it spit out? Draw to 3D wave. Yeah, that all kind of makes sense. Okay, at override one. That'll do. Okay, right now, let's um, do some other stuff. Let's give it a little bit of depth and scenery. Um, let's... God, this is incredibly long. Let's maybe put that there like that. Okay. Now let's make a let's make a jit.gl dot um, grid shape at shape plane at scale 20 and at position uh, zero zero minus uh, one. Okay, so what I've done is created a plane, but it's just a tiny little bit behind or underneath the graph. And the reason why I've done that is because I want to create some shadows. So I'm going to do jit.gl.light at type point at shadows, oh my goodness me, at shadows one. Um, okay. Right, okay, we're not seeing the shadow because we need to connect material to this grid shape. It's jit.gl.material. Let's just connect that straight to there. Ah, there we go. We've got some shadows. Um, nice. Let's give this a bit of tungsten. Yeah, that looks well, Ned Rush. Look at that. Salmon and tungsten. Uh, let's hard code that. Transform, change attributes to arguments. Okay, that's... All very nice. So the light position is a little bit strange. So let's maybe do at position uh, zero, zero. Let's try zero, one. Yeah, that's cool. That'll do nicely. Sweet. So um, we are now currently. Oh, it looks really satisfying. I'm so pleased with myself. Let's um, change this. So, so basically, this menu now is saying record four ends worth of um, of audio, which at 120 BPM would be a beat. If I was to change that to one end, that's a whole bar. So then that's going to record. Now the shadows look shit. <laughs> um, let's maybe try a different shadow position. Let's try one, one point one. No, that's really bad. Let's try point. No, that's bad as well. Let's try three. Oh, that's a little bit better. Let's try point two. Let's try. Let's try zero zero three. Yeah, that looks good. That'll do. Okay, so yeah, if I was to put this to stay to sixteenth notes, then that's recording sixteenth notes worth of audio into our um, buffer. Still looks pretty cool though. One nice thing that we can do is that we can apply some sliding here. Let's do a jit.slide at slide down three. Connect the output of that to the graph. And then it just applies a little bit of sliding, make it look a little bit more fluid. Oh, it's lovely. Right, let's make a camera. Get a camera to move around. Let's make a jit.gl.camera here at look at zero 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 at lock look one at tripod one okay and then let's go pack position f f um f and let's start with actually f f f f f2 create a jet dot time dot perlin at speed uh, 0 0.01 take two of those connect that into that 
and that into that. And that is just going to give us, well, maybe. Yeah, it's just giving us a little bit of camera movement that's just sort of slowly panning round. Let's take another one and say, um, at offset one, connect that into the third in, whoa. Okay, there we go. So now we've just got a little bit of camera movement around our funky 3D. If you wanted to make it look a little bit more um, pronounced and present on the Z axis, then we can just basically turn up the scale. But I think it doesn't look as good. I liked it where it was, 0.25. Okay, this is pretty nice. This is looking like a pretty okay little visualizer to me. Um, let's pack it all now into a Max for Live thing. We only really want controls for how much of the buffer we want to record into and maybe the slide. So let's go prepend slide underscore down and connect that there. And then we'll create a live dial We'll go into the inspector and I'll say the live dial. I want to be from zero to 10, maybe. Unit style to be float. Let's give it a name here. Let's just call it slide and slide here. Connect that to the prepen slide. And then now I can give it loads of slide or, oh, no slide at all. Yeah, that's good. Let's give it a default of one. Load, uh, initial enable one. Okay, double click that, all right. Yes, that's all looking good to me. Let's select that and the U menu, do Command Shift P. And let's indeed do the same for the waveform and this little P window here so that we can check that they're working. Let's go to presentation mode. Let's go to the inspector for the patch and say, under basic, open in presentation. Okay, Let's just put these here. Let's maybe line this up. Oh, they are actually the same length. Okay, that's fine. All right, I'm going to go save as. Um, I shall save it to my desktop. I shall call it uh, 3D, 3D Wave Ned Rush. Okay, let's close that, see if it's worked. Yeah, there we go, it's kind of working. Yeah, it's got an early 90s charm. <laughs> oh, this is nice, look, we're really getting up close to it now. Okay, there we go. So that is how you can make a fun 3D waveform thing in Max for Live and run it in Ableton. Um, I really think this is the future. I think we should all be writing our own little visualizers and running them in Ableton. It's just extending out the Ableton universe like infinitely. Okay, I'm going to go and put this on my Patreon now where you'll be able to download this plus a whole load of other stuff. If you hadn't noticed throughout February, I was posting one Max for Live device a day and there's loads of like mad visualizers in there as well. I love making weird visualizers for Ableton and posting them on my Patreon. So there's loads of stuff to explore, including this nice new one I've just made. Okay, that's it. Thanks everyone. See you next time. Bye.